Stress and self-talk. We've all been there. I have too. When we're talking to ourselves, our monkey brain, right? And our monkey brain is going all day long. Some estimate we have 50,000, 60,000 thoughts per day and up to 70% of them can be negative, right? Our, our brain is based on fear. Tony Robbins has taught this as well as many others, or others have. We're always cautious. We're always asking questions. Is that a problem over here? Is that bothering us over here? Is that going to be an issue over here? If you think about it from an evolutionary standpoint, we're all, we weren't always the supreme uh, uh, being on, on the planet. So we had to defend ourselves. We had to fight for food. We had to concern about weather and, and, and shelter and so on and so forth. So. Uh, a lot of our thoughts were, is that going to be a problem in, in protection and, and, and so on, okay? So because of that background, here we are with a brain that's not designed to make us uh, be, be great and be awesome and be in love. Our, we have a brain that's designed to make us be fearful so we can be protectionist for ourselves and, and our family. So we're running our monkey brain now and we don't have to worry about a lot of the stressors that were going on in our lives for a long period of time, but we're still defeating ourselves day in and day out. So that's the self-talk, right? So I call it impeccable self-talk. What we're trying to do is improve our self-talk to a, a, a place, even if we shift that 10, 20, 30%, that we're gonna be building ourselves up and enhancing our lives and showing up better and deciding that we wanna show up better mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, in our work lives, our family lives, our relationship lives, or whatever it might be, right? So if we can show up better, we're gonna be enjoying our lives better and being a better participant on this journey. I like the way that Tony Robbins puts it. He calls it now, and this is such a great term, emotional fitness. Now we hear about emotional intelligence, but he takes it a step further. Yeah, we wanna be emotionally intelligent, he says, but we want to be fit. It's kind of like working out our bodies, getting physically fit, strong and flexible and with endurance. So if we have to go do a task, we can handle it when we get called to do so. Same thing with our emotional fitness. We want to be at a place where we can draw on tools and we're already emotionally fit. So when a pressure, a challenge, catch that pressure and challenge, I didn't say stress, I said pressure and challenge, comes our way, we're better apt to handle it because we have tools in the toolbox that we have exercised over and over again so we can get better at handling the things that are coming at us, right? That's what he means by emotional fitness. That's my interpretation of it. And I really like that a lot. I think that's what we're trying to achieve. Better emotional fitness so we can handle the things in life. Well, here's three things that you consider doing. And these are three things that I work on every day to try to make my own life better, to try to make myself better, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. The first one is changing your morning routine. Many people say if you, if you, to win the day, you have to win the morning, okay? Changing your morning routine. And I'm just gonna go through a bunch of people that have morning routines that you can go listen to, consider, develop your own, and so forth, and so forth. Right now, you might have a morning routine, which is the alarm clock goes off and, and you, you, you turn it off. And then the alarm clock goes off and you say, oh, I don't want to get up right now. And it goes off and you're like, I'm, I'm tired. I'm warm in bed and I don't want to get up. And just before we went on here, we were talking about Mel Robbins and the work that she's done. And she's one definite per person to check out, listen to her morning routine strategies if you haven't checked out Mel Robbins. So... She will talk about morning routines. And uh, she has some recent podcasts she, she does offering additional strategies on making changes. So you can get better apt of getting that, getting that gas going in the morning mentally and emotionally so you can get ready for the day. Of course, Tony Robbins has a variety of strategies and techniques. There's one video that you might want to check out. Just go to YouTube, put in Tony Robbins priming, priming, and he has 10 or 12 minute exercise. It's like, a, it's like a meditation, but it's also a primer for the day, hence the name of it, right? I've done it many, many times. It's really good. It's short, it's crisp, it gets you going. It's definitely exercising gratitude. It's definitely filling up your bank account. It's, it's definitely um, incre increasing, stacking the good, more on that in just a moment. So he's getting you primed for the day. I like that, I, I think that's a good idea. 
Of course, a lot of you might just use prayer, but if you're only praying for a minute and you're saying the same prayer, maybe you need to exercise that a little bit more, develop that a little bit more. Exercise that muscle of prayer, right? Andrew Huberman, I've talked about him a lot here. He's got a great podcast. He's had awesome guests. A variety of his guests have morning routine changes, and he has his own. You can go to his podcast, check out his strategies. Rich Roll, same thing. Great morning routine person. Wonderful guests on his podcast that will go over what they're doing in their lives. We talked about Mel Robbins. Here's another great one. Hal Elrod, he wrote a book, The Miracle Morning. And he has morning strategies, which I have definitely adopted. And a lot of these things are just a couple of minutes each, where he does some gratitude practice, some journaling practice, some meditation practice, and you can get into that. So definitely look at his strategies, probably right on his website as well. Here's a book by a psychologist and a psychiatrist. The book is called The Tools by Barry Michaels and Phil Stutz. Great book, excellent conditioners that they have in there. They have excellent pattern breakers. These are things that if you just remember these brief tools, when you're in a situation you feel yourself reacting, you can pull yourself out of it very, very quickly with the tools, right? Hence the book. So great strategies there. Here's a new one, a bit of a curveball for you. If you're looking for changing your morning routine, but also from an exercise standpoint, a nutritional standpoint, a waking up standpoint, a cold immersion standpoint, and so forth, go listen to the podcast, Dana White on Gary Brecka. Dana White, the guest on Gary Brecka. Now, Gary Brecka is a biologist, but he has a program out there that can transform people's life. And Dana White, if you don't know who Dana White is, go, go look him up. And this is a very powerful video. I'm going to say it came out in October of 2023. Listen to that, and you'll see that Dana White was not heading in a good direction health-wise, medical-wise. And he was on all these pills and still heading in a bad direction. And then he did Gary Brecker's whole routine, which includes changing the morning. And now he has completely transformed his life. Very, very powerful interview. Go listen to that one. If you want to go back to some basics, I've talked about Napoleon Hill and that great book, Think and Grow Rich. Does that change your morning routine? Yep. It's got a morning routine in there and an evening routine in there that will definitely shake things up for you. And when, when we say Think and Grow Rich, it's not rich by trying to make a million dollars, even though that's the subtitle of the book. I like taking the word rich out of the title and just putting in Think and Grow. And I think that's what the book is all about, is changing that. Jocko Willink is another one who will definitely change your morning routine if you go look at some of his strategies. And he's had very interesting guests that can do that. So that's number one on, uh, on quieting the monkey brain and taking control is changing your morning routine. Number two is stacking the good. Stacking the good. And, and this is such a powerful message from Tony Robbins. Stack the good. So what are you trying to do here? Again. When we're talking ourselves down, when we are defeating ourselves with the things that, that will say, well, this is how you've been in the past, and this is how you're going to show up today, and this isn't going to be any better, or I get a presentation that's going to go over, and I haven't really prepared, so I'm going to flop, or okay, here's another relationship challenge that I have, and we're going to go talk to this person about this thing, and we know how that's going to end up, because it's going to be terrible, and so on and so forth. But if you start exercising your your emotional fitness, you can do that by stacking the good. And that's what Tony Robbins does. He says, Tony Robbins says, you know, I've been able to transform my life and build myself into the man that I am now because I've stacked the good throughout my life and I practice that. Well, one way to do that, he says, if you want to really interrupt your state, your mental, emotional state and mind that you have right now is go and write down, this is a great exercise, write down 20 things that are magnificent in your life. Not just good, what are 20 things that are magnificent in your life? And when you do this, and I'm, I'm telling you because I've done this, when you do this, it's really interesting. It's really powerful. You might start off and say, I only have three things that are magnificent in my life, or I have none. When you, when you put that pen to paper and you start thinking about the things that are magnificent, you can pull and drag and yank and think of and discover and re-remember 
things that have been magnificent in your life for sure. You're pulling those things out, you're stacking the good, and then you've got more things that you can draw on. Oh my goodness, that's right, I did that. Wow, I really rose to the occasion over here. You know, I remember when I was younger and I did that for somebody over here, and so on. And they can be relationship things, and they can be childhood things, and they can be school things, and work things, and whatever you did to help somebody else. Pull those things that are magnificent. Or just, let's say you live in the United States, you live in one of the richest, freest countries that's ever been known in mankind's history. Well, that's pretty magnificent. You can just write these things down, and then you can rely on that. And a lot of, a lot of people talk about a gratitude journal. The gratitude journal is stacking the good, as Tony Robbins is talking about. Oprah Winfrey talks about that. She, she writes in her gratitude journal all the time, all the things. They can be very small things that you're grateful for all the time. And the science is extremely clear. As soon as you go to gratitude, you're changing your neurochemistry. As soon as you go to gratitude, you're taking control of the monkey brain. As soon as you go to gratitude, you're going to release those chemicals and hormones that make you feel awesome. That's what stacking the good is all about. And the last one, again, this is more a Tony Robbins strategy, is ask better questions. Buried in asking better questions are something called softeners. And he used that term called softeners, okay? So we wake up in the morning and say, oh, this is terrible. And this today is going to be terrible, right? So that, that's not a softener, right? And that's setting you up for a great day? Not so much, okay? So what you can do right at that moment is break the pattern and say, wait a minute, I just said today is going to be terrible. Is that really true? Notice that was a question. Is that really true? Is today going to be terrible? Well, not necessarily because I have this mixed in here and I have that and I get to go see this person and I have to work out over here and then I'm going to uh, meet my loved one for dinner tonight and I've got some meetings in here that are, are going to be not, let's say, joyous, but here we are, okay? Well, Maybe those meetings that I'm really not looking forward to, which was going to make it a terrible day, I wonder what would happen if I showed up better. Can I show up differently to those meetings today? Hmm. Another question. Different answers. You see? Instead of stating today's going to be terrible because I remember that day a month ago and, and two months ago and three months ago, anytime we have this day with these three meetings with these three people, it's a terrible day, right? Can I show up differently? What would it take for me to show up differently? How can I alter my attitude to show up differently? And all of a sudden, you're sitting there and thinking, well, maybe today isn't so terrible after all, okay? Softeners. How do you, how do you make changes? You're asking different questions. It softens it up. How terrible am I going to be at this presentation I have to do today? Well, do I have to be terrible? You just, you just change your pattern. You just change your monkey brain. You get to ask a different question that's a softener and come up with some different answers. I have to uh, address these issues with my kids because the kids behaved inappropriately last night or there's something going on at school and, oh, this is just going to be, we're going to be butting heads again. It's going to be terrible, okay? Does it have to be terrible? Just, I just came up with another question. Well, it doesn't have to be. Well, how can I show up differently in this situation? How can we work together to just change the trajectory of where they're going right now? How can I help them lead? How can I lead them a little bit better? How can I help them discover a different answer in their behavior and how they're showing up and how they're addressing this and that, you see? So you can start to change these questions. It doesn't have to be something fake either. It doesn't have to go, today is going to be terrible because I've got these rough things to handle in the family and in business and so forth, to I'm going to be a Buddhist, godlike, amazing uh, pillar of light and a beacon of peace today. Okay, well, maybe that's a bit of a stretch to go from, from there to there, but if you can start with some of those simple questions saying, does it, does it have to be terrible today? Can I show up differently? What can I do differently that might make this a little bit better? Asking better questions can change the al alteration of your monkey mind, come up with different answers, start stacking the good, look at changing the morning routine, even if it's a couple minutes here and there, and you'll have a better chance of changing that discussion that you're having in your own head. I'm Dr. Scott Fuller.